This is a screencast for the DAWA DHIPC HDB3200CN. Uh, this is a 2 megapixel dome camera from DAWA. Uh, so, first we just go to its IP address. Its default address is 192.168.1.103. Uh, it can be accessed from a variety of different browsers. In this particular case, I am using Internet Explorer, but you can also use uh, Google Chrome or Firefox. Uh, the default login is admin and admin, and I have changed the password on here. Go ahead and log in. When you first log in, you will see the main stream. You'll see up here at the top the current kilobit per second rate. You can also go down here and adjust uh, height widths. Uh, you can adjust the image quality the way you want it if you need more brightness. Uh, you can also view the substream. In this particular case, the substream uh, looks to be like D1, or less than D1 even. Okay, now uh, you can also change the protocol for uh, TCP, UDP, or multicast. There are also some additional options up here uh, for digital zoom because this is 1920 by 1080, a full. 1080p. Uh, you can snapshot, so you can take a single picture, and you can see here what I've done is I've snapshotted it, and we just have it in Microsoft Office Pictures Manager. Um, we can go in here and do multiple snapshots. Uh, you can re start recording immediately. So, for example, if you're just watching the camera, uh, we can change the focus, and you got help here. Now, that's just on the main entry screen on live show. Live show. Now, of course, most people won't be looking at these live. They will be looking at them over an NVR. Now, when we go into setup, we have a whole bunch of different options here. The first of these is conditions of the camera and the video. We can set the full-time brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. We can change the exposure modes, uh, and that adjusts for either allowing the camera to pick which mode, uh, whether working with low light. For example, if you select low noise, you're able to pick up and make almost pitch black look like daytime in certain cases. Now, uh, you can also change the scope of the game. You can change the profiles, uh, or if you do customize, you can even make it uh, for a particular level of uh, brightness. You can also change the uh, day-night profile, or you can switch by period, so you can say uh, at certain time, you can switch over to black and white to get a little bit more clarity. You can set all the different options for backlight control, WDR, and all that. You can, of course, mirror them. This occurs real time. Uh, you can flip them 90 degrees, 180 degrees. All right, now, whenever you make those changes, they're automatically saved. Uh, we can also go in here to video, and video is where we would set all of our streams. So we have two streams coming out of here, a mainstream and a substream. This mainstream uh, can be from just general output, or it can be a separate stream that's triggered by motion. So motion could be a different stream. Uh, you can select your encoding method, motion JPEG or 264B. Uh, you can change the resolution if you don't need that much resolution and you want to cut down on your uh, amount of data sending back. You can change the number of frames per second. You can change to constant or variable bitrate. And of course, in variable bitrate, we have different levels of quality and bitrate. Uh, you can change the overall bitrate. Uh, and that, of course, allows you to uh, control how much quality you want versus how much bandwidth you need to consume. Uh, you can change your iframe interval uh, as appropriate, depending on how much motion you're generating. You can put a watermark in there on top of the video coming out of the camera if you're not doing that in an NVR. You can set a substream and a substream is useful for certain NVRs uh, to allow them to record or view in a substream as opposed to a primary stream in high def. So that will cut down on bandwidth. Also if you're using mobile devices you might even do for example D, uh, CIF. Very what would be considered low res but for a mobile device would be more sufficient say on an iPhone. All right, now uh, also within there, of course, you can adjust the frame rate, the bit rate, and the iframe intervals. All right, you can also go in here to snapshot interval. So if you're taking snapshots um, in the camera, you can say how often and at what interval. 
So for example, let's say you want to snapshot, save them off to the included internal memory uh, that has a SD slot, or let's say you want to FTP them. You can do that here. You can also do that snapshot just based off a of time or off an event such as motion. You can overlay privacy masking here. You can see where I could move in and block something if I wanted to. Uh, I can put on the title of the channel and I can put in time and date. Alright, this is the path. As I mentioned, it has SD card and you could put an SD card in there for local storage and it'll snap those pictures out to a particular directory. Alright, now, now on the network we have TCP IP and of course you have all the things you'd expect. Uh, you can set the IP address, you can set IP4, IP6, uh, you can set all the DNS and, and the type of uh, addressing, DHCP or so on. Uh, you can set how many uh, connections you can make to this camera before it uh, doesn't honor anymore. You can see that it does have RTSP so you can stream to VLC or Media Player or any other application that supports RTSP. Uh, of course you can also change your port numbers. For example, let's say that uh, you were just exposing these directly to the internet and you were logging in remotely. You may have multiple cameras so you may need 8081, 82, 83, 84 for example. You can also change the default SM, uh, TCP IP and UDP ports. All right. Now, um, I don't even know, PPPoE, dynamic DNS, it does support dynamic DNS. DynDNS, you've probably seen that before, allows you to update where you are on the internet from the camera. Uh, you can filter based on IP address. So if you have a particular place, let's say it's exposed on the internet is most likely, you can uh, filter that out and uh, disallow that or allow that. You can set SMTP and SMTP would be in use with alarms and for example motion or a time of day. So you might have a particular time of day you want to send a snapshot or whenever there's motion you want a snapshot sent along with the email to let you know. Uh, you can automatically configure ports. Bonjour for finding the device. You can configure multicast as opposed to unicast. And you could do QoS. I guess that's quality of service. I don't know. Um, under event, you can do motion detection here. And you can set when it's working and when it's not working under motion detect. Uh, you can set sensitivity. You can set the area, of course, and all that. Um, you can set how many seconds to record after you've started the recording as a result of a motion detection. And you can select to send off a snapshot or also send an email as I mentioned before uh, and then you can also do video masking. Uh, if there are problems with the camera, for example if there's no SD card, uh, if there's a problem with the space running out, uh, if there's a problem with the SD card itself, the camera is disconnected, uh, you might want to roll it directly to the camera so in case there was a disconnection you still capture data or even if there's an IP conflict so that the data on the camera has somewhere to go. Uh, now under storage, storage is of course related to storing the data in the camera itself if you use an SD card. Um, you can also combine that with the snapshot I mentioned earlier. You could set up snapshots so that it occurs at a particular time. Uh, you can do things with these particular uh, photos or video and you can say uh, where to put those, either saving them locally or FTP for video or snapshots. Um, this would allow you to see what uh, storage you have on the device and then this is where you would configure an FTP server if you're uploading it to an FTP server. Um, record control, I'm not familiar with that option. You have system in here, you have device name, NTST, NTSC, this is an NTSC camera so it doesn't do PAL. Uh, you can set the date and time, you can also set date and time of course just by simply syncing to the PC, but you can also do it with a in TP server, which uh, if, uh, for certain devices uh, using RTSP you may need to have that fairly uh, exact between the server and the client. All right, you can set up accounts. Uh, these are just the built-in accounts. You can change the password on this uh, and allow different people into different cameras. You can restore all the defaults. Uh, you can import and export settings uh, as a group. You can automatically reboot the camera just to make sure that it's uh, fun fully functional if it gets stuck or anything. Uh, you can manually reboot the camera remotely and you can upload the firmware directly here without having to take the camera down. 
You can see the firmware version here. Uh, you can see log of what has happened on the camera, like uh, who's logged in and what events have occurred. And you can also see who's currently logged into the camera. Now also here on alarm, uh, we can see uh, and basically filter for different events as they have occurred, motion uh, detection, video masking, those types of things. And of course, finally, uh, we can log out. So that's a review of this DAWA 3200.